Mm-hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be taking a look at this college football ranking, all 134. Yes, there are 134 teams. You know, I remember when it was 131 for a while. It seems like they're adding FBS teams every year now, but they're not the teams we expect they would add, like the North Dakota States, the South Dakota States. Kennesaw State gets added this year, and it looks like they've got Kennesaw State last, which you could argue maybe they're not last, but let's go through this. This is from, I think it's just an article that I saw, and I wanted to react to it. So let's see, 1 through 10. They do have Ohio State over Georgia. Look, when it comes to Ohio State and Georgia, most people are going to go Georgia right now because of the returning QB. It is funny, Ohio State's rank in 2023 was 10 because they had that bad bowl game against Missouri. Georgia at number two, you know, again, you could argue either one. Right now, the AP poll has Georgia number one, Oregon three, Texas four, Alabama five, no surprises, Ole Miss six, Notre Dame, Michigan, Florida State, Missouri. I think FSU right now is ranked 10th, and people really do, are not high on FSU from what I've seen. Michigan at number eight. I've seen a lot of people think Michigan, I mean, they did go 15-0 and last year, possibly missing the playoff this year, the 12-team playoff that is. And I have seen a lot of people put them in that like eight or nine range in terms of the playoff as well. Kind of surprised Penn State's not there inside of the top uh, the top ten. They've got Penn State at number twelve, Utah at eleven. I do think Utah probably. I have them in the playoff, but they very likely could miss it. It seems like everyone's picking Utah to make the playoff. That conference is just it's such a a mosh pit. And I mean, they did go eight and five last year. Cam Rising got hurt. Utah just doesn't have crazy talent to where they're going to have, we know they're going to have six or seven very close games. They could easily lose two or three of them. And if that happens, it's going to be tough for them to make the playoff. However, being in the big 12, I think this year people are going to get very, very angry because based on how even all of those teams are, we could see multiple three loss teams in the conference championship, both of the three, like two, three loss teams in the conference championship. And then whoever wins that gets vaulted up to the number four overall seed because they win the conference championship. They get an automatic auto buy. And then you're going to have like an Oregon and Ohio state below like a three loss big 12 champion. People are going to be pissed. They're going to be pissed about the group of five team as well. It depends how well the group of five team plays. Personally, I like that, the fact that group of five teams make the, you know, are given an auto bid just because it's cool to include them. But I do understand. I mean, if you're like an Ole Miss, a Penn State, if you're on the fringe of getting in and you get thrown out because you're ranked 12th, but the group of five volts in front of you, that's going to be tough. LSU at 13. LSU is very hard to gauge. Just the amount of talent they're replacing, how much better they'll be on defense, we'll see. Tennessee at number 14. I do like Tennessee this year. They've got an explosive offense. The past three years, they've been really good on offense. We'll see about their defense. Oklahoma at number 15. You know, if Oklahoma was still in the Big 12, I think they'd be like a top seven or eight team right now. People are a little bit down on Oklahoma because the schedule gets insanely tougher. The same cannot be said for Texas. I think because Texas last year established themselves as a playoff team. They've got Ewers back. But it wouldn't surprise me if Texas missed the playoff, honestly, just because going to the SEC, it's going to be tough. Oh, I mean, they also have a game at Michigan in week two, for Texas does, which I think for Texas is going to be very annoying. I see Michigan trying to game control, ball control that game to death. And for Texas, I guess it is good. Michigan really doesn't have a, co- a quarterback right now in week two. It's not like the QB is going to be really broken in that well. But Oklahoma, they're a team that has a lot of talent. It's just tough joining the SEC. The schedule gets insanely harder. Clemson, I think people are underrating Clemson right now. They went 9-4 and four last year. They've always got a really good defense. They've got such good talent on that team. Miami, yep, my, people seem to love Miami. Look at this. They went 7-6. and six. They've got them at 17 right now. We'll see with Miami, but they've spent a ton of money on that team. They finished 51st in terms of ranking. Iowa State, Iowa State's getting a lot of hype as well. But being in that conference, Matt Campbell, can he have a little bit of a reboot? If you guys remember Matt Campbell, he was always the top. Oh, coaching carousel, he's the number one guy. I remember people thought Matt Campbell was going to go to Michigan. But at this point, the the luster's kind of wearing off there with six losses last year. Past two years have not been good. I mean, they had Brock Purdy, and they really weren't that good with Brock Purdy. It's kind of interesting. I guess that's why he was a late-round pick. But, yeah, they're supposed to be good this year. It's just tough. Like, look at this. Iowa State, Kansas State, Kansas, Oklahoma State. These are all Big 12 teams. It's just such a mosh. You know, it's a mishmash. Oklahoma State could be another team that wins that conference. Kansas could win that conference. Kansas State could win that conference. I've seen people predict. 
All of those teams, AM at 23, huge game against Notre Dame. Where did they they have they had Notre Dame in the top 10. Yeah, they, they must have. Uh AM sitting right now two and a half point favorites over Notre Dame in that week one game. And honestly, I think I'm gonna pick AM to win. It just feels like at home. Well, I don't know. It's gonna be tough because Riley Leonard, new QB for Notre Dame, AM, entire new look, lost some players to the portal. They've still got a ton of talent, though. We will see. You've got Virginia Tech sitting at number 24, kind of a team that's been hyped up this year. I mean, look at Virginia Tech and AM ranked in the 50s. They've moved them all the way up, and then Arizona moves way down because they lost their head coach. They're in the Big 12. They're another team that has a lot of talent, so we will see. 26 through 50, NC State. They're a dark horse. You want to talk about dark horses to make the playoff. Being in the ACC, I haven't looked at their schedule. I'll have to see if they get Miami at home. Maybe they dodge Clemson. But they have a huge early season game, neutral site game against Tennessee. I think they'll lose it. But if they do win it, that would be a huge win for them. West Virginia at 27. West Virginia with a huge week one game. I think West Virginia is going to lose to Penn State, but I love them to cover that 10-point spread. They're 10-point underdogs right now. Week one, noon start time uh, in Morgantown. So they're at home. And then you do have SMU. Another SMU has a very easy schedule. It's like they went from the American to the ACC and they somehow got an easier schedule. I'm kidding, but still, it's it's close. Boise State, they might be the best group of five team here. At least they're ranked that high. Liberty, another ridiculously easy schedule. It'll be interesting to see what happens to Liberty. I think, honestly, Liberty might go undefeated and they might still leave them out. The problem with Liberty is they went undefeated on a really easy schedule last year. They were 13-0, and then they got trounced, trounced by uh, Oregon. So they were undefeated last year. They, they were the team that made the New Year Six Bowl, the Group of Five team, and then they got annihilated. So with Liberty, I don't know about them. Even if they go 13-0 with that ridiculously easy schedule, is it just going to be a repeat where they get destroyed? We'll have to see. Memphis is a team I could definitely see making the playoff. They have a very manageable schedule. They've got a returning QB, a lot of returning talent on that roster. They they always seem to be a good team. They, they won 10 games last year. They return a lot of the same players. So I think uh, Memphis could... I actually predicted them to make the playoff to be the group of five team. Louisville, you can see how far Louisville is dropping from 19 to 32. Yeah, that makes sense. I think Louisville is going to be worse. USC... Yeah, USC had a down year last year. This year, they might be better. The problem is they're going to have a lot tougher of a schedule. And they do also face LSU week one in a huge uh, non-conference game, neutral site game. Auburn at 34. Auburn's got a lot of talent. So they moved up significantly from 59. We'll see. Florida's got a really hard schedule. These are all the SEC teams they're throwing in there. I think Florida's probably going to be another 5-7 and seven type year for them. Nebraska moving up. Nebraska has a very easy schedule. We'll see with the quarterback situation. They got a young five-star QB. So, I mean, they could be undefeated going into their road game at Ohio State. I think they'd be 6-0 and at that point. UCF. UCF's always normally a solid team. Last year, they were definitely down. But I do like UCF to have a bounce back year. Appalachian State is another group of five team that might make the playoff. How about Washington? They finished number two, 14-1, and one, and now they're at 39. Yeah, Washington's going to take a big step back. Probably a six or a seven win type season. Rutgers, here's another interesting thing. Believe it or not, Rutgers, they were in the Big Ten East. All of these teams get added to the conference. There's no divisions, and they have a very easy schedule, and they have, have had a really good defense the past few years. I could see Rutgers winning nine games, honestly. I really could, like nine and three. And you can see they moved up eight spots from last year. Tulane moving down. They're another team that could maybe jockey for the playoff. Do they return Pratt, the, the, the QB? I don't know. Fresno State. Fresno State opens the season at Michigan. So that'll be interesting. I think Fresno State might be able to keep that game close early just because Michigan dealing with the new quarterbacks, breaking them in. But that'll be like a 7.30 game. And Fresno State had a good season last year. They're, they always seem to be a solid team. Kentucky, it's going to be tough being in the SEC. South Carolina, I don't see being very good. North Carolina, they were 8-5 and five last year. Yeah, I mean, that's probably pretty right. TCU, Georgia Tech, Texas Tech. Texas Tech's gotten a lot of hype. And then Cal. Cal is another team that I could see being maybe better than expected their first year in the ACC. You do have Colorado at 51. They finished 81st. I think Colorado is probably a 6-6 six and six team, maybe 7-5. and five. I don't think Colorado is going to be very good. I know they, they got all the hype and everything like that, but a lot of people do not like Colorado now. I know that. Arkansas, they had a horrible season last year. I really don't think it's going to be a lot better, maybe 5-7. and seven. Maryland... Yeah, I mean, Maryland lost their QB. Probably they're, they're going to be maybe like a 6-7 and seven type team. 
uh, or seven and seven and five type or whatever. Duke and eh, Duke's not going to be very good losing Riley Leonard, although they didn't have him for a lot of last year. It's a shame what happened to Duke. UNLV, UNLV's got a very good receiver. We'll see. South Florida is another team I'm seeing people predict to make the playoffs. Same thing with Texas State, but more so with South Florida. I've seen Boise State, South Florida, Texas State, Memphis. A few people picking UNLV. I think that a few people picking Toledo, UTSA. There, there's UTSA right there. Uh, Syracuse with Kyle McCord. <laughs> Syracuse has a very easy schedule, but I still don't think they're going to be very good. Mississippi State, yeah, probably a four and eight season, honestly. Northwestern. Northwestern surprisingly had a good year. Northwestern is definitely an uh, like an unstable program. They could very easily go one and eleven if we're being honest. And they're playing at that dinky little s- stadium by the lake and. I think they'll probably win like three games, honestly. Minnesota. Minnesota's always like a 500 team. Boston College. I'm surprised they've got Boston College this high, honestly. UTSA. They must have lost some players. They went from 39 to 63. Miami of Ohio. Wow. So they have Miami of Ohio over Toledo. Imagine Miami of Ohio made the playoff and they faced Ohio State <laughs> What, what are, in the first round. That would be a, a big spread there. Toledo. Yeah, Toledo has been really good in the MAC the last three years. Army, 6-6 six and six last year. Remember Air Force? I mean, Air Force was like 7-0 and at one point. I mean, I predicted Air Force to go undefeated, and they were 7-0. They were they were like ranked 20th. UCLA at 68, joining the Big Ten. That's that's a tough that's a tough draw for them. They go from 33 to 68. Ouch. You do have Baylor. They were 3-9 and nine last year. Yeah, Baylor should be more improved this year. I agree. Maybe a 6-6 six and six type team. Michigan State. I think Michigan State should be improved as well. With uh, Jonathan Smith, Childs, but probably five and seven. If we're being honest, it's a tough conference. Oregon State, Oregon State might might go eight and five again, something like that. They've got an easier schedule now. It's basically a group of five schedule facing mainly the Mountain West teams. Washington State has the same thing. Troy had a good season last year. James Madison is another team that wow they they finished twenty six last year. Now they're at seventy four. By the way, I think this is where they finished in terms of these rankings. Not, It's nothing like crazy. It's not like this is analytically done. BYU, yeah, BYU had a bad season last year, their first year in the Big 12. Wyoming, Wyoming down significantly. Jacksonville State, they had a decent year last year. San Diego State, San Jose State. Uh, Indiana probably going to win two games. I'm surprised Illinois is this low. I think Illinois, maybe another five. I would like Illinois to be good, although I think it's too late for that now. Seriously, Illinois had a chance, like a 10-year window. They could have been good in the Big Ten West. I mean, that was an, an easy, easy division. They just were never good. It's it's unfortunate. Pittsburgh, yeah, Pittsburgh's but it's been tough for them. They went three and nine last year. Virginia's always they're they're not a good football school. Houston, Houston had a really rough year last year in the Big 12, their first year. Colorado State. Colorado State's, I think they will be a little bit better. I think they'll probably be a seven and five type team at the maybe an eight and four type team. Uh, you do have Stanford. Yeah, Stanford, it's uh, joining the ACC. We'll see. You do also have Purdue, 4-8 and eight last year. Purdue's got a pretty funny matchup at home against Oregon. And Oregon's playing them after they play Ohio State, so that could be a letdown game. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, none of these. Marshall, Marshall faces Ohio State this year. I didn't realize how lowly rated Marshall was. I thought they'd be in like the 60s. Or, uh, I guess it makes sense. If there's 134 teams, there's Vanderbilt. It was a brutal year last year for Cincinnati. Vanderbilt's uh, the worst team in the SEC. Ohio went 10-3 and last year. Florida Atlantic, they, they, they have not been good recently. And then uh, Hawaii's pretty high up. I remember when Hawaii was like the worst team in FBS, but they're trending up it looks like. So good for them. Other than that, there's really nothing surprising. UConn up a little bit from where they normally are. Akron... Ken State, yeah, Ken State was horrible last year. UMass, that's UMass is always terrible. But there you can see Kennesaw State, they put them as last place. Either way, I just wanted to react to that, look at all of the rankings from 1 to 134. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.